Sup, can you name the most signature smartphone series of each manufacturer? For Samsung, I think that has always been Galaxy Note, basically thanks to S Pen Stylus that gets enhanced functions year by year. The only problem with Galaxy Note line that no one has escaping from is a gigantic price tag. Yes, Samsung's making a fortune out of it each year, and they definitely want more, as in 2019 Galaxy Note family hit the expansion to slightly less premium class and the world's got Galaxy Note 10 Lite. Has Samsung managed to find a delicate balance between lower price and capabilities of product itself? Welcome to TechFellas, my name is Bogdan, and let's tech into it. The part that stands for light in naming is first of all in the build of the body. If the original model has made of aluminum and glass, this guy's got plastic back. Gladly the front is still glass. You can see obvious signs of use that tells us about not the highest wear resistance of lacquer plastic, but knowing how people love to protect everything, I do not think this is a big problem. After all, if cover from AliExpress costs one box, why the hell not to use it? Despite the fact that plastic is lighter than glass, Note 10 Lite doesn't feel like a hollow chippy, all thanks to the metal frame and the large battery that I'll mention a bit later. I would also note that if to set against the older brothers, Lite has at least one prominent advantage – a headphone jack. Well, the smartphone looks more modern from the back and not as trivial as Note 10, although in fact I wouldn't say that I like this new fashion for rectangular set of cameras. Samsung didn't return the power button, the key on the right side will still enable a Bixby call if you hold it, but honestly, do people turn the smartphones off that often? So I don't think that it will be a deal maker. Also, Type-C port here acts like USB 2.0, but not 3.1, as in anything else apart from budget or Chinese phones. Regarding biometric sensors, here we have the most common modern market decisions. For instance, if top Samsung smartphones use ultrasonic fingerprint reader, then Galaxy Note 10 Lite offers us an optical one. It works works satisfactorily quickly, but apart from the speed, here is frankly nothing to complain about and no headache with the screen protection. The face recognition power lies inside the front camera, which is not the top-notch technology either, but Samsung enhanced its settings. You can toggle faster recognition, stay on lock screen option, turn on the maximum screen brightness in case you cannot hit the fingerprint zone in the dark, and even more. Another level down comparing with Galaxy Note 10 not light is the screen. If the big guy has dynamic AMOLED display, here Samsung is offering a 6.7 inch Super AMOLED, which is technically the closest analog to Note 10 Plus in terms of size. The resolution here less is lower, Full HD Plus if you wonder. Of course you wonder, you wouldn't last watching this video that long unless you really wonder. But I'm grateful, in any case. Ok, remember that all the model had Quad HD+. Luckily, cause of the high screen quality, this difference feels not critical. The picture is seamless without any graining, we found no separate pixels and pen tile artifacts can be seen only in artificially created conditions and when examined at closer range. In short, the life with 394 dpi is surely safe and sound. The only thing that the screen bows down to the latest Samsung developments is the maximum brightness brightness, which is even visually lower than in Galaxy Note 10. In daily practice, even on a sunny day, the view from the screen of what soon is going to become a photo is clear whether the sun is in front or behind my back. It definitely could be better, but just for the sake of this, I would rather not pay extra to get Galaxy Note 10 Plus. In the list of screen settings, I frankly enjoyed the variety of things that I can change. A blue light filter, checked, a dark theme, Checked, color correction options, check, even suddenly the edge menu. Why all of a sudden? Cause the screen is not bloody waterfall and this in my humble opinion deserves a thumbs up. There is no option to deal with DC dimming, but I have good reasons to believe that it works by default since PWM is not punching your eyes even on a low brightness. There are gestures too, but honestly we find Android buttons more attractive and user friendly, so use it pretty much often in our videos. And among the things that you can enable here is the increased sensitivity of the screen for more comfortable swiping with glows on your arms. Who would I be if I forgot to mention always on display? And who would 
Samsung B unless they include it here. Its configuration is almost as flexible as in the flagships. All the basic settings are in place except for, it seems, background pictures. The thing why some people would strongly prefer to buy Galaxy Note series smartphone is S Pen. The one that slides out of Galaxy Note 10 Lite knows 4096 pressure levels. By your leave, I won't highlight all the magic this little one can do. After all, we've got Galaxy Note 10 Plus video with details, but I will leave the mention here and of course in the description box below, if you please. What I'm going to share with you is basically what this particular S Pen doesn't have. Apparently there is no gyroscope in it for doing stylus gestures in media and camera, kinda like in Harry Potter. So you can wave it until you lose your mind, nothing will happen. But Bluetooth is included, because device still knows how to switch cameras, flip through photos and do other things with magic button. In short, I wouldn't say that potential buyers will suffer from a bit cut functions of this S Pen. Now let me tell you about hardware. The smartphone is built on more than one year old Exynos 9810 chip, so for you to understand, these brains are from Galaxy S9, but in our case the low performance core's frequency is reduced by 100 MHz. Graphics stably remained Mali G72 MP18. There are 6 or 8 gigs of RAM on choose and 128 gigs of storage in all variations. The standard of the memory is UFS 2.1, you can expand it only by sacrificing a second SIM card. As for the performance, the smartphone acts partially predictable and partly quite surprising. For example, it was expected that the general software is rocking highly quick here. Despite the fact that the processor is not the freshest, it's not some crappy media tech. However, I didn't expect that modern games will be a piece of cake too. While playing World Tanks Blitz even after 30 minutes, I didn't manage to throw the smartphone off the track. We started with 55 to 60 FPS and kept with this number to the last. It's hard for me to tell how long the music will play for this chip. Perhaps it will remain relevant for a long time, or maybe the excellent work will end up in a couple of months. I don't know. In terms of heating, Note and Light doesn't need a long ceremony before getting warm. You may feel it even with daily use while watching YouTube or listening music. In order to feel the change in temperature of the body, it is enough to run and to the test, but it will still unlikely to flame up the phone. The only thing that could really warm this guy was a throttling test, but frankly, it is what it has to do, whatever it takes. Doesn't matter whether it's 2 or 20 minutes of gameplay, situation will not change, the smartphone will just remain warm. Two years work on chipset optimization and Samsung did a great job. The battery life with all this stuff is at least not bad, because with minimal effort a full battery charge can give you up to two days of work. If you're gonna use the smartphone actively, it won't be easy to bring it down in a day. Actually, it's not only because its processor is so easy going, but also due to battery capacity, which is a record for Note series, 4500 mAh. It's 200 more than in Galaxy Note 10 Plus. Time to talk about the sound. The good news, through headphones the smartphone sounds nicely. Kinda a tradition for Samsung, there is a slight enhance in warmth and smoothness, but otherwise, by the standards of smartphones, everything is decent. Plus, there is a small margin in a maximum volume, that should be enough for the smartphone to shout louder than almost any external noise, of course, when used with appropriate headphones. Here comes the black line, the speaker is not so well here, the volume does its direct duties like ringing an incoming call and notification sound, but first of all, this doesn't mean that the speaker is very loud, it's just ok. Secondly, we can't call it a pleasant sound, it's harsh, choppy and squeaky, in general we've heard better. Cameras have always been a strong side of Samsung flagship. What about this guy? In total, I can say that everything is good, but Note 10 Lite cannot be called the best camera phone for its budget. And here's why. To begin with, there are three cameras in total. If Telephoto One shoots seemingly as well as the main camera, then the ultra wide lens is no match for it. The outcoming photos from the latter one turns out to be blurry, and in order to fix this, the contour sharpness is enhanced to all the shots, which makes them not natural. It is two times optical zoom in our case. It makes bright objects to glow slightly, but apart from this, I have nothing to complain about Telephoto Lens. The photos are clear 
clear and certainly is pleasing, which is especially important when zooming. The main camera doesn't surprise with anything special, but it shoots well, and unlike some other brand smartphones, there are no traces of wild noise reduction and visual beauty enhancements, which is definitely good. There is a night mode in camera app, and I recommend using it only with the main camera and only in cases of very poor lighting or when you fight against contre-région in the dark. Otherwise, auto mode works just as fine or even better. In fact, you will spend a lot less effort and time during the shooting. The technology is frankly the same as everywhere else. Teamwork of enhanced HDR and noise reduction. Unfortunately, the outcoming picks cannot be called ideal, but in the case of this shot, the phones made real miracle by catching those details that human eye couldn't. So sometimes the feature really saves the situation. As for the video, the maximum resolution here is 4K and the phone shoots with software stabilization. I really miss these words on our channel. Apart from jerky switching between the lenses, I found no obvious flaws. Besides, I love that switching in here. The picture is clear, some shakings are almost perfectly removed. Camera app has super stabilization option that levels down the resolution of the image to 1080p, but makes almost smooth clips even more smoother. When shooting on the go, this may not be so noticeable, but in more extreme cases, I am sure the difference will be much significant. The front-facing camera is the less not the best in here. For some reason, the picture is lacking of clarity and sharpness that eventually leads to program troubleshooting. What is interesting, when recording UHD video, this is felt no longer. Check this out by yourself. As you see, the program stabilization has its flaws, but everything else is just awesome. I'd like to spare a lot of words about software, but One UI 2.0 is the same as we've seen many times before. I can say that the system works fast without lagging, at least on my watch. However, it's no wonder because the chipset here gave enough time and chances for developers to manage with all its drawbacks, so most of the optimization job was done far before the smartphone was landed into the thoughts of designers. Summarizing the stuff, on the first view, Galaxy Note 10 Lite doesn't look like a tasty offer. The battery capacity is basically the only thing that is better than a Note 10. Smartphone loses in screen quality, old hardware, plastic bag, downgraded stylus and slower data transfer. If to imagine a butcher cutting out wings of chicken, it feels kinda the same for Note 10 Lite. However, what's left from the flagship of 2019 costs nearly the same as other flagships of 2019, like Galaxy S10. You totally can find Note 10 for the same price as Note 10 Lite, but this would be a refurbished phone. New one costs almost twice as much, and Note 10 Plus is even more expensive. And Note 9 looks to be forgotten somewhere on market shelves, has less powerful battery and likely to stop getting software updates earlier than the hero of this review. Hope you didn't lost in notes. In general, this is the phone for people who always needed a spend but never had enough wish to spend a lot of money on it. For you, Samsung now has an offer you simply cannot refuse even despite all its shortcomings. So I will leave the links to internet stores for buying this guy in the description box below. And if you like this video, then why not to support our channel by subscribing to it, hitting the like button, ringing the bell to stay tuned for more cool content. My thanks for watching and cheers.